In today's episode, Heidi asks, Do I remember correctly that you recommend accepting all LinkedIn requests? Do you do anything to mark people that you don't know so that you can keep them separate? Um, I do absolutely uh, recommend that people consider uh, having a LinkedIn account in which they accept all connection requests. Now, if you want to have a very tightly knit LinkedIn um experience then you may want to have two linkedin accounts you may want to have one that is purely just uh, uh private communications and one that is sort of your public face in the same way that uh it's recommended as best practice for you to have a personal facebook account but also to have a facebook page <clears throat> so that you can uh, disambiguate the two Given that, uh, is there a way to keep them separate? Not within LinkedIn itself. Uh, LinkedIn used to have tagging for contacts, but that went away um, about a year ago, I think, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and so that's no longer available to, uh, to, to people who are doing networking on LinkedIn. What you can do and what I recommend you do is that you employ some sort of marketing automation software that that you can bring your LinkedIn contact data and all your data into, uh, importing that information into a system that then allows you to, to categorize and score and rank um, <clears throat> people as based on your interactions with them. That is a fairly heavy lift from uh, a to-do list perspective, so it has to be worth your time. If you spend a ton of time on LinkedIn, and it is, you know, if you're, for example, uh, a professional marketer, uh, you should absolutely be investing a lot of time creating content for LinkedIn, publishing it, uh, making connections and things like that. Uh, what are some of the options that are available to you? Uh, there are some really great, one of the great free options is HubSpot's uh, sales CRM. Uh, you, can ins you can open up a free account and you have an unlimited number of connections. There's, there's limited things you can do with it, um, but you would put the tracking pixel from that onto your personal website or your uh, portfolio or any owned media. And then as you communicate with people, uh, it will then track the uh, amount of activity you have with them and show you who's more connected to you, who visits your stuff, etc. Uh, the one I personally prefer to use is called Modic. Um, it is an open source uh, marketing automation software. It is not the most friendly thing to get set up and running on your own. You can buy the professional version, which has a, you know, a, a substantially higher monthly fee. I use the uh, cloud hosted version I, I, I use the self hosted version where you have to go through a lot of hoops to get it up and running but the cost for me for uh, you know a 50,000 person database is somewhere around eight dollars a month which is um, super affordable and again just like HubSpot you install the tracking codes and stuff like that and then you you send email to people that ha you have permission to send email to um, and it tracks who you have interactions with. It tracks the, those those connections, people who visit your website and stuff, and then gives you a sense by lead scoring of who's the most engaged with you. Uh, one important thing with LinkedIn is that um, you can't, it's against the terms of service, to simply mass mail all your connections. So you can import that data. You can export your data and import it for tracking purposes, but you can't just send out one massive blast to people. What you can do is, as people connect with you, send them a, a one-off message each time uh, within LinkedIn itself saying, hey, thanks for connecting with me. Um, I got a newsletter here. If you're so interested, please subscribe to it and you give them the link. And that would be a way to legitimately do that without violating the terms of service. Um, you can store that as like a text snippet and then just use a, uh, a text shortener to key code it every time someone connects with you. Is just do a little thing and, uh, and, and it, it goes fairly quickly. Um, but that's how to manage that, you know, all those connections on LinkedIn is send them uh, you know, accept the request, let them know who you are, let them know what you do, um, ask them how you can be helpful to them, uh, maybe, and invite them to uh, connect with you in other channels, and that way, um, that way you get that tracking information. And then in your marketing automation software, that's where you want to tag where contacts came from. So if you've imported your LinkedIn connections into your, your marketing automation or your CRM software, you'd specify, yes, this came from LinkedIn, um, and that way you can remember, oh, this person, you know, LinkedIn has helped me uh, 
reach new audiences or different audiences you can do a lot of data analysis on those people once you've got them in <clears throat> likewise when you send out email newsletters if you were so inclined that you wanted to segment out just the linkedin audience for some reason um you could absolutely do that with you know a google analytics utm tags and so on and so forth so great question Again, remember to adhere to the terms of service uh, and and follow the rules so that you don't get kicked off and get your account banned, which is you know completely counterproductive to to the point of LinkedIn in the first place. And you're going to need some kind of third-party software. Again, HubSpot's CRM, the basic version, is free of financial costs, so it's worth looking into. Uh, I use Modic because I need heavier-duty stuff that allows you know unlimited features and unlimited contacts. Um, and I pay like five to eight bucks a month, depending on how much email I send each month. So great question. Thanks for asking. As always, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and to the newsletter. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care. If you want help with your company's data and analytics, visit BrainTrustInsights.com today and let us know how we can help you.